And we're back, part two with Willie Mack. We just finished up with Mach 1 or whatever Drew ended it on. But we're going to start we're going to talk about championship wrestling from Hollywood. How, you been there how long? Like the whole run? Yep, since they first started. What are some of your favorite matches from the years that you've been there? Uh, my feud with Chaos to like my debut match over there and um a bunch of little things when I got the team with Colt Cabana against the Disorder. Hmm. Yeah. Just like a bunch of stuff was pretty good. My few matches I had with Pierce. Stuff like that. How, how is it working with Pierce? Because people say it's hard, like... Well, shit. Yeah, he's like, he's like very stiff in the ring, very hard. I know he knocked out Machevsky, Machevsky at a Slugger Pro's anniversary. Oh. Beat the shit out of him. Well, he's an old school cat, so... He knows how to like lay it in there. You look at him, you know he ain't gonna come at you with no soft stuff. And yeah. I wouldn't expect it coming from him. So, hey, we both two big dudes, and I know what he gonna give me, so I'm gonna give it right back to him. So, every time I work with him, it was fun. So we always beat the hell out of each other, but at the end of the day, it would always come out as a good match. So, what, what, what is one of the fear places that they ran? They ran a lot of places over a few years. Let's run a few places. I liked it when it was at the Glendale Studios. Yeah. That was like one of my favorite places. That was your big moment. You feud with Scott. Like when did the feud with Scott start? What was it like you? It was actually the first time was when I had like a title shot against him. It wasn't like no big hype or nothing behind it. It was at the old uh, Showcase Theater mm -hmm. on La Brea. And then they moved a few to the spot in Glendale. And that's when we like capped it all off and had those last two or three matches. That's part of the feud of the year last year. He's had, he has had a ladder match. He's had a few matches. So how was like, how was it with Scott? I know he's one. Have great chemistry with him and stuff. Yeah, he's one of the few people that I can like actually go in there. Like, I know what he's gonna do. He pretty much knows what I'm gonna do, and we could just go in there and have a good match and just fill off of each other and. That's what makes it all good. You had a big blow off the ladder match. How brutal was that ladder match? I forgot. That was a sight. Yeah, it was. Was that one of your first ladder matches or what? Yep. Your first ladder match? Mm hmm My first ever ladder match. And from being on my first one, people said I did kind of good, so. I apologize for Christian Cole. <coughs> yep. <laughs> yep, I surely did. Every day, everybody picks on Christian Cole and stuff. So <laughs> beat the shit out of him. <laughs> That's what he likes to do. And he gets the fans to pop. Whoever hates Christian Cole. And I know I wasn't there, I left because I was anxious, but win that TV title. And even on the Showcat Roundtable, even though people knew it was going to happen, they said it still was a, one of the best moments in Hollywood. Mm. How emotional was it when that TV title? It was because it was like a long time coming. Like the people, damn, we feud it for almost a year, mm. or just about. And people was behind me all the way, and I didn't expect nothing like that, so. When I finally won it, it let me know like my hard work paid off. Like the, the time and stuff that I put in this company, it's like actually something coming back from it. So it felt really, really great. Especially at the time when my pops got sick and stuff like yeah. that. So I needed something to help me kind of get through dealing with him being sick. Then we had the big memorial show. How was that? Like you were very emotional that so like a lot of support for you. And now the dome closing, that like one of your big memories from the dome was like that memorial show. Yep. Yeah, because I, my homies, they came together and put it together, like a little show, and a few other folks hit me up and said, we want to do a memorial show for Foots. And I'm like, nah, nah, I don't really want like to be dependent on people. I don't want them to take time out of their busy schedule and stuff just to like mess with my problems or deal with my stuff, but mm -hmm. they said, no, nah, we, we want to help you because we want to, and I'm like, all right, if y'all want to, y'all could. And that really tripped me out how many people actually cared or gave a damn about what was going on in my life. One of the best moments I've been around the ring, that was probably one of the best moments I've seen wrestling in the Dome history. Yeah. What's the other moments? Because the Dome's closing soon, the 29th, everybody be there at AWS. Mostly just an eight, number eighty best shows. Run by eighty best mostly. Hmm. We can't promote it because some people say we can't promote it. 
at SummerSlam again tonight. But what's your favorite matches that done? Universal Giant, good time there. You wrestled a few guys. Sin Bodhi, uh, Kendrick, I wrestled there, and a bunch of other people. But I guess my f favorite had to be the Memorial Show. Yeah. That had to be like my top favorite show there. Yeah, it was really, really fun. I think the first time I saw you wrestle was against him. No, first time I saw you wrestle, because I got into wrestling. Our first show was GT4, wrestling Team of Generico. I was a Team of Generico, now he's MWB killing it. And you team with him almost won the tournament. Yeah, it was fun teaming with him, man. It was random when I got the news that I would be teaming with him. I'm like, what the hell? And we did good the first round. Second round, we did good. Made it to the finals. And ended up getting beat by the dudes who ended up becoming the world tag champs in the whole thing. So the Super Smash Bros. <laughs> that was really a good thing because I wrestled them before at the Battle of L.A. That was a great match. That was like after you beat Hero. Yep. Yeah, like I wrestled them then, and I thought we would have had a rematch or something, but they teamed us up, and I was like, see what happens. Just roll with the punches and. We ended up becoming a good tag team. Too bad they didn't use us more as a tag team instead of just like a one-time thing. And people just been kind of up and down, like booking you. It's kind of weird. Like you were in the world title hunt, you had your feud with Cage. How was that? How did that went? You feud with Cage, and they gave you a world title shot, and the Cage interfered. You know, it's kind of all coming up. Yeah, and then I, I don't know. It was weird. It was stupid, stupid stuff that I don't really like. Yeah. Like just like after that. Everybody was all hyped. You know, Super Dragon doesn't watch this, so it's all free unless someone that, tells them no. It's good. Like yeah. it was like it was after the match with Cage I had when stuff started going down. Yeah. Because it was like people was all hyped for it, and then like just because a few people didn't like it, they said it was a bad match and this, that, and the other. That's when me and Cage is, you notice they start chanting the next world champion like both of them. Yeah. And then after that, PWG kind of like. He kind of just went down here instead of like they went to the young, they went to the Drake bandwagon and the Adam Cole bandwagon. Yeah, because yeah. after Bola, like before Bola was the next world champ, and going into Bola, it was going to be Cage Mac, Cage Mac. Then in the finals it was this, it was Cole. Yep. Who did Cole, Cole, Cole face in twenty twelve about Bola finals? Uh, Where he went from. Where did he beat? Was it O'Reilly? I don't think he beat O'Reilly. I think O'Reilly got beat. Who was it? In twenty twelve Bola. Random show. Because I'm thinking whoever he beat, I'm trying to remember who it was. Was it Steen? No. It hit Steen. No, because Steen was the champ back then. Mm. Come on. I'm not even sure. But yeah, like after that match, like some people weren't too happy with it. So it was like, uh, that's when I start. Getting booked every other show and all this other crap, and I'm like, he beat Elgin. Elgin's been two finals. That's what it was, cause they both beat the same person twice. Yeah. Mm. Cause you got beat by Sammy Callahan. Like how? Like the birthday boy. Oh yeah, cause you were booked so strongly before that. The fans are all behind you. They're always behind you, and like every going into that, and, how, and like when he told you you're losing the first round, I'm like, was what was that blow to you? Like losing the first round. Like you I kind of knew some shit like that was going to happen, but I was like... But do you think they favored? Like, PWG, it's a great place to go. The atmosphere's great. We all love PWG. But the booking there is, is just like they cater to like the fans, the, the wrestlers that make the money from DVDs. Like, the cover is the big seller. I guess so, because it's like, it's a fun place to wrestle in. Everybody on the East Coast want to come here, all the different countries, but at the end of the day, it's still just... Somewhere to wrestle. It's mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I guess that's just coming from me being in like the little dumbass booking position they have me in. Yeah. Like now me and B-Boy is teaming, which is fun. It's like, huh, the yeah. two dudes we ain't doing shit with, let's just put them together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. And then like the big deal, like the big thing that came out of that weekend was you faced a team sleazy, which everybody remembers. Because mm -hmm. did you know that like, Joey Ryan and them were going to come out like that? Cause you guys came out like the thugs, like no, no, no offense. You guys came out like they came. You came out all thuggish, and then them, them, them guys came out like all crazy. Drake Younger is a thug. <laughs> oh, you can't. Well, <laughs> don't cut Drake Younger, Drake Younger. I think it's the first time you heard Drake Younger's ever been called a thug. Is on Sean's sense. 
What do you think about Team Sleazy and Face Gnome? It was cool. It was like, and that's what I wanted to like, imagine people remember you for. But they more remember this Sleazy Kyle and Sleazy. Baby. And, and Kyle tried to run out the building. <laughs> the one door was locked. Yeah, because you expect, like, Davey and him to be all serious. Davey and Kyle, but, like, that's actually the time you get to see a little personality out of them, and it's fun. Yeah, when, they, when, they are, when they were like Team Ambition, like I saw a match of them versus the Hooligans, who are a big upcoming tag team and stuff, they were just, they're just, f- just joking around. It wasn't even a good match. Like, they just they didn't wrestle. Mm-hmm. 13 minute match, but nine and more, they still haven't wrestled. Oh. So PWG are doing good in there, and then you went to the East Coast. How was the East Coast tour, and how did it come about going to CZW and AIW and all that? The East Coast stuff was fun. I like to go back. Actually, yeah, I'm going back uh, in December. On the 13th, I'm going to be wrestling for FSW out there, Five Star Wrestling. Huh. It's going to be me in a five-way for their title versus Jarrell Maximo, Jigsaw, huh. Sabian from uh, CZW Jeezy, and somebody else. Right, a fifth, uh, yep, a fifth person that they ain't announced yet. So right. How did that tour come about? You, you getting in the best of the best. Who helped you get there? Uh... DJI just hit me up, and I guess a bunch of people who worked for him was like bugging him, saying like, "You need to bring Willie out because he's, you know, this and that." And Drake was cool with me too because he knew, because like I knew him when he used to come work for Mr. California before anybody knew who he was out here. Yeah, yeah and like he was like, "Yeah, Willie's good," and this and another, and they gave me a shot, and they liked me in that three way I had. Yeah, three. That was one of the first iPad reviews I ordered. It was you, Greg X Flamers, and who? I can't remember the third guy. Alice Colon. And we had the grape soda. Or was it the grape soda bit? It was grape soda for me. Greg had the Mountain Dew, and Colon, since he's part of Fort Loco. Puerto Rican or whatever he is, he had pineapple flavored soda. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how that turned out. But that was fun, and AIW was really fun. I was out there for the JT Lightning Memorial Tournament. Yeah. I wrestled Ethan Page the first night and the second night. In the semifinals, I wrestled ACH. Yeah. Two good matches, and hopefully I can go back because that's a really good place. Got a lot of people came from there. Tyler Black and Eric Cannon and a bunch of other folks. Colin DeLady, Josh Prohibition was one of my tight homies from out there. They had Debbie killing it with Gleam in the Cube. It was a great sh- show by him in some more video. They just had a great show, Double Dare Tournament, which was absolutely great. What's that? Double Dare was their tag tournament they had a couple months ago. Oh, huh. And they, then their, their new champion is Ultramantis Black. He's the... Yeah, he beat Ethan Page. Oh. Yeah. First match for the company. Huh. Keep wearing that, so... Peter okay. Cage. So yeah, they're just putting you with a uh, B boy, and like, is it frustrating to be in those six man tags, or you just go in, the, in there and opening matches try to steal it from everybody else? No, I'm just going in there to do my thing. Yeah. Like sometimes you do get pissed off when you like see that you the first match, because it's like, all right, I've been in the first match, but then I went to like semi or main or something like that. Because your semi like, face in Elgin was that tremendous. Yep. Like I have a picture on my phone of. Him lifting you up, like, was that first time you ever been suplexed, like, li- deadlift? Uh, first time ever to deadlift you, like that? Yeah. Like, he's like, how, how, he's like, fucking, tr- how is it to face Elgin? Does he have stiff as ever says he has? No, he's cool, he's just like, just like me, it's like, you know, you're gonna be in there for a fight, and strength with strength, I always look good, and he got speed, and uh-huh. stuff like that, it mixes it up. Who's the stiffest guy you wrestle? Uh, like, I know you, I don't know. Yeah. Well, Jarrell's kind of stiff. Jacob Diaz. Yeah. Marcus Wright. Yep. He's going back to Marcus Wright. Face team up Tim Donaldson. He's back to Marcus Wright. And he's <laughs> he's kind of stiff, but I don't think he realizes it, so. He's got the R strength. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to say the R word, but we know what you we know. What, what Roderick strength? Retard strength. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, you got that. So what about the Triple H trial? Yeah, the big big trial done by Conan up at, 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 at PWR, oh. and then you won that. So how was that trial? And how... that thing was amazing, but it was random at the same time because I wasn't even going to try out. I just came to chill. <laughs> Cause me, Ray Rosas, and Famous B rode up together and just 
they tried out, and I was just going to chill in the hotel room. He said, you, they told me, do I want to come and just hang out? I said, all right. So I got my clothes and got ready. We went down to the PWR school, and to my end, I didn't bring my gear and nothing to train in. I just came to chill like I thought I was, and they just threw me up in there. They're like, how many people we got training? They're like, oh, it's 18 with Willie. I'm like, no, it's not. I just came to chill. They're like, all right, Willie, go get your stuff. I'm like, I just came to chill. They're like, all right, we're going to put Willie in the six man. I'm like, I just came to chill. <laughs> so I went, I said, fuck it, put my shit on. I mean, got out my shorts and put like my undershorts on and made them really tight. Did the first six man match. And then hoping I was going to get eliminated because, you know, <laughs> I was just there to chill. Hoping to get eliminated. Like, all right, you advanced into the semis. Had another six-man match. I was like, all right, this is it. I'm done. And then I made it to the finals. I was like, fuck. I was like, all right. Did my thing there. And then they got everybody up and talked to all of us one by one until they finally announced who the winners was. And Conan was like, well, when I say the winner's name, you shouldn't be surprised who it is, and all these other people shouldn't be like, oh, why did he get it? You know damn well why he got it, and he said Willie Mack is the winner. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, damn. Like, I won that one, and the other dude, Vinny Massaro. That's a snoring elbow? Yep. What Vinny Massaro, he won, like, he won the other part, because it was two winners. It was me and him, and I think we both qualified for the USA one. And Mexico one. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. And that's supposed to be happening really soon, I heard. So. Yeah, you're on that one of the AAA posters. Has that, has that show happened yet? Uh, the, the big AAA poster that was on there. The. I think it was like tar in October. Oh, the Crash Luchas. Yeah. That's the AAA sister company. Okay. They're out in uh, Tijuana. And yeah. like, because that's how they work. They always have like the AAA dudes in the main event. But like before that, it's like local dudes and like myself, they'll flock, they'll have me come out and do some stuff. And yeah, they love me in Mexico. I'm surprised as hell. Yeah, I know. Atox said it was it took like 20 minutes to get in the arena because everybody like mobbed you. Yeah, it was weird. I had this one random ass fan that I couldn't like. Is he's a fan? I could stand him, but like it was, it was weird. He like Willie really Mack. Welcome to the crash. <laughs> Five minutes later, welcome back to welcome to Tijuana. <laughs> five minutes, Willie. Welcome to the. I'm like motherfucker. You said hi to me four or five times already. Leave me alone. <laughs> it's like I'm cool and all, but it's like when you do most. It's another dude that does that too at the PWG shows. Mm. He looks like Johnny you almost. Oh yeah. Yeah, he always has a San Francisco hat. Okay. You seen him before? Yeah, I think I seen him. I've been yeah, there he'll do that same. He'll get drunk and do that same <laughs> shit, but his is like every minute. And I'll be like, dog, you said hi to me like fifteen times already. <laughs> like, I'm that, the coolest person you could meet, but like yeah. when you get like multiple yeah. shits like that, it's like too much for the brain to handle, especially after a match. <laughs> yeah, long period. Like, we, let's go to a question that race that crazy fan experience. What do you have any more about that? Like fans like getting so India. Uh oh. Outside your apartment going, chocolate, chocolate, come out. Oh, no. But I had like a fun fan experience because like it was me and Biggie Biggs at an MWF show. Yeah. And fucking, he was beating me up. He was a heel on the outside. And I'm on the ground getting fucked up. And all of a sudden, he's like right here. I'm like this. All of a sudden, I see a motherfucking cane come up from behind his back and hit him over the head. And like, he get hits and he like moves out the way. And I look. It's this little old lady with her fucking oxygen tank and her cane. Mexican lady beating his ass because he was beating me up. They're like, Chocolate, come on, get up. And I was like, what? And like, so I just kind of rolled over and kind of laughed and just crawled back in the ring. That was like one of the funnest things I ever seen. Happy partner. Yep. The <laughs> manager. <laughs> She had to be like 70 or 80. She just got up with her little cane and just was fucking them up. <laughs> That's funny. Yes. So what, what opponents do you haven't wrestled yet? I know you've been around for so long, but any people that are coming up that you want to wrestle? Future opponents? Uh, I like to wrestle Eric Cannon. Oh, yeah. Him, probably. He's been the main event in AEW back-to-back months. Huh. Him, probably Josh Prohibition or M-Dog, like the old school backyard pioneer, sir. 
professional. Yeah. M Dog, man, he's built like motherfucker. He's like jacked up Daniel Bryan. Yep. I like to wrestle Super Dragon if you ever come back. Yeah. He, uh, he teases it on the message board. Yeah. I just don't know if his heels are. Him, uh. Damn, who else I like to wrestle? Probably Kyle O'Reilly, maybe. Yeah. Adam Cole, of course. Yeah. Uh, Any some kind of guys coming up that you want to come wrestle at Hollywood or IWL <laughs> or AWS? Most of the dudes from SoCal I already wrestled, and I wanted to wrestle like SoCal crazy. Yeah, that was a killing that match. That was one of the matches of the night. Like, every time you go in there, like, AWS, when Willie's on the card, it's like, you know that match is going to be good. I like to wrestle Todd Chandler, because mm-hmm. I know it's been a bunch of times I was supposed to wrestle him, but stuff came up to where I couldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, probably Othello. Oh, Othello, yeah. And uh, Matt Stryker. Yeah, Matt Stryker was with Matt. That would be a great match, man. Yeah, I'd love to do that. And then... Speaking of Matt Stryker, you had the Open Door Challenge and you, the dream match happened. You were Snow Joe. How did that come out? And was it what you expected? Yeah, because, damn, I didn't expect it to happen at all because they told me. And I was like, what? I was like, all right. Because I'm like one of those persons that's like, all right, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. So when... I met him at Bound for Glory. He was like, "Yeah, we're gonna be doing some stuff pretty soon," and I was like, "Oh shit!" And that was a tr- it was a dream match for a bunch of people. I didn't realize it was so. A bunch of people was making a buzz about it, so yeah, I know, like, it finally happened. And my friend asked, said like, you could wrestle a lot of people and start to find matches, matches for you like that are not. I don't want to be racist, but like black people or like Night like, Small Joe is not black. <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> Yep. I'm an odd dude, so. But Samoa Joe was like, Samoa Joe was going to match be a great match. And when they announced it, I was like, holy shit. He yeah. talks to do, but he wouldn't tell him. He's like, I don't know the match <laughs> until it was revealed. <laughs> he just put Samoa Joe's poster on. He's like, oh, it happens. Yeah, because it was like, shit, he wanted the few big men to like revolutionize wrestling for like people like me and yeah. Steen and other chunky dudes that could go in there and do some stuff. So mm. when I'm at a PWG show watching them in the ring, seeing all his all weight stuff, it's like, I want to wrestle that dude one day, and fucking five, six years later, I end up wrestling him. It's like, damn, it's really happening. It felt great, like an accomplishment. Like, they could have picked anybody else in that damn locker room to wrestle him, like, especially like Joey or Sky or Drake or somebody you would expect to see get that match. So you felt special going ahead of, like, your main eventing, ahead of Ryan, ahead of a younger, ahead of a striker, and like WB and TN, WWE guys and Hollywood guys. You're ahead of all the champions. They had all the championship matches, and you're like more important than all the titles. Yeah, I was expecting the Heritage title to be the main event, but no, nah, they put us on last. I was like, oh, okay, shit. But one thing I was more surprised about, there was more pro Joe than that. Were you surprised that was more Joe? Oh, like fan reaction? Yeah, fan reaction was more pro. I knew that was going to happen. You expect <laughs> that. Like, this one weird ass fan, he's just mad at me because I want to add him on Facebook. <laughs> I think his name is Rob Nash or something like that. Uh-huh. And like I seen him in the crowd, he was like, no, there's little here that Joe Like doing that <laughs> shit like it's gonna piss me off. I'm like, all right, he's gonna do whatever, but guess what? I'm in the ring doing this and you out there. Yeah. So, so you, yeah, look at take it for what it is. Yeah. But it don't bother me as long as we went out there and did our job and had like some crowd reaction, which I heard a lot of stuff, so. People liked it. I liked it. He was down with it, and apparently we'll see what happens from there. Hopefully, I get a rematch or something down the line. Is that gonna lead to TNA? Because everybody's like, all the fan questions I get is like, have you gotten any any questions from TNA? Did TNA ever reach out for you? I don't know. I know I saw. <laughs> Even if TNA hit me up, I don't know why they expect me to tell them before anybody else. Cause mm-hmm. it's like. You know how, like, if you know something yeah. and you say it too quick, some yeah. shit could come up and that stuff not yeah, even yeah. happen? Yeah. That's the kind of situations, like, you get yourself in. Yeah. So I'm like, if, have they hit me up? Maybe, maybe hey. not. Yeah. Shit. Little mama, show me how you move it. Go ahead, put your back into it. Do your thing like it ain't nothing to it. Chick, 